Hello YouTubers, hope you enjoyed the videos I uploaded from Piotrkowski Cello Festival. There were so many spectacular performers. Wow, um, they are just great. After watching them, half of my brain was depressed. So I was depressed, but half of my brain is also very happy and I'm happy for them and very impressed with their skills. Probably I like the Baroque Festival the best. Five different soloists played five different Baroque concertos Saturday night. And uh, well, you guys may wonder how come I don't have to work. But actually, I do work. I'm a minimum wage eye doctor. Yeah, minimum wage. I still work eight to ten hours a day last week, every day, including that Saturday. I work from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and I ate dinner in my car and I got there like 6.30 and the concert was great. I like every performer. Well, the, the least, uh, I, I like maybe the talk um, on cello acquisition the least. Uh, I think there's a lot of conflict of interest. I just want to tell you my perspective. I just uploaded the video on those five speakers who talk about how to acquire and uh, buy old instruments. You should spend a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. I think um, there's a lot of conflict of interest. You don't have to listen to them. Here's my perspective. Um, if we are good, we are good. I'm not that good. So I'm not into music. So if I, I'm dumb and I have a smartphone, the smartphone doesn't make me any smarter. So uh, I'm not that good as a cello. So no matter how much I spend on the cello, it is not going to help me one iota. Um, so I wouldn't spend more than $100,000 on a cello or a bow because um, you can spend your money on other things. For example, what can I think of? Like uh, a car, it takes me to work and it has autopilot so I can uh, work more and uh, even though I'm that tired, it can take me home. And uh, so what if they say the Italian masters have skill? Well, car builders have skill too and a lot of engines like that one the engine is hand built and there are so much talent that goes into car making there are teams who design wheels uh, scientists who study the rubber material uh, engineers computer scientists there's so much talent in car making and i think um, the price is relatively low compared to an old instrument where only one master is responsible for making it. So in car industry, the car makers even have to build race tracks to test their cars. So think about all the effort spending designing the car, uh, design and engineer, material, leather, everything. Interior, exterior, wheel, department, suspension. So much talent goes into it and also making the race course that news reporters can uh, send drones or planes fly over to videotape their cars. So there's a lot of talent in car making industry also. Um, so I heard that this cellist from Russia, Armenia, well trained in Russia, but Armenian cellist Narek is great and I saw him perform, he's so good. Um, and also very philosophical and deep. And uh, people say he used a uh, cello that was made in China for a long time, and that cello was less than $10,000. So if he uses that, um, I shouldn't be spending more than $500 on the cello. So that's how I put things into perspective. Plus, I'm a minimum wage doctor, so uh, I can't afford anything um, exotic. So I've decided that perhaps I should uh, make my own instrument. It's pretty easy. You take a course, buy a book like this, 
you can uh, you can read it and it makes you how to make make instruments start with a small things violin first and then hopefully a few years later you'll get to do a cello so today I cut this out um, and these are the ribs and the wood wood blocks see and all this material is $100 US and with modern uh, instruments and drills and tools hopefully with some training I'll be as good as Antonio or Giuseppe or Matteo okay then I can spend my money elsewhere buying things that, that are really worth the money. Don't spend it on cello. Don't listen to those five jokers. If you spend that much money on a cello, it may, may be uh, destroyed by termites or it can be dropped. And there may be something better. If you are really that good, donors and patrons will, will look you up and give you or loan you an instrument. You shouldn't be spending money on those. Uh, spend it on cars. It's way better uh, because it can take you to work. Uh, you can be more productive, and you can even enjoy listening to music inside the car or, or eating dinner. Okay, that's my advice. Uh, good luck to you all. Adios. I forgot to show you the name of this introductory book, uh, Violin Making Step by Step by Henry Strobo. Okay, and uh, there are diagrams, a lot of diagrams, and blueprint. You need a blueprint in order to make a violin, your first violin. And you can uh, acquire these various blueprints of uh, Stradivarius and other great violins or channels and they are all available so why not make your own hey I'm just a uh, minimum wage eye doctor oh now it's um, political season make sure you vote to increase minimum wage I need an increase in my minimum wage so that I don't have to work eight hours a day maybe I'll work uh, four hours a day to uh, pay the bills and I can do something else so good luck to you all um, and also have some confidence I'm sure you guys can do it uh, if I can do it you can do it and accuracy is not even important at first I thought well with modern tools I should able to cut accurately no you don't need that the Italian makers are notorious for being inaccurate and they are unlike their German counterparts. Well, just think of the price. Well, German uh, violins or cellos are not worth half as much as Italian master works. And the Italian masters are not even accurate. 
there are a lot of asymmetry. So one side is bigger than the other side, so forth. So accuracy is not even important. So who cares? Maybe you'll become a grandmaster in making violin or cellos too. So give it a try. And uh, I'm sure you'll have more fun doing that than uh, practicing uh, cello. Okay, good luck. It makes it easier to undo them later when you have to undo them. Because if, if you look here on this one, you'll see there's a piece of paper towel in between the, the two pieces. So all you do is when you glue it in, you take your glue and you put a, a, a glue in here. You take the two glued surfaces and put them together. So you've got a paper towel in there between the two, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you leave the paper towel there, because what you're going to do to loosen these later... Like how many how many sheets are in there? Just one sheet. Just a... Just a just well, it looks bunched up. It does, but that's because it's bunched up. It's just one sheet. It's just... Yeah, it's a piece about that big. That's all. Mm. You put glue here, you put glue here, you put that on first, you put that on second. You can do it while it's standing up, because it'll be standing up. And you clamp it together with one of these. And this one you clamp with this. So you can see it just goes in like this. This goes on one side, this comes right in the other side, and it's got a flat block here. It's not curved. So it just what you do is I would take these round things off. And you just come right in, glue it in, it'll hit the flat side of the block. Very simple, glue them right in place. Okay. Um, you can have all six of them on there. Just do them one at a time. For this one, you use a longer one so that it will reach, and it's just going to come from here down to here. And because they're square, they'll actually rest right on the bench. You know? So that's why we use the cutout method. Then just make sure they're pushed flat down flat on your board before you walk away from it when you're done. Okay, mm -hmm. so just do one block at a time. I get it centered. Just pick any block you want. Um, I like to put the upper and lower blocks in first. Um, get them placed in place, and then come around behind it. And using this, you have room to squeeze in the. Do these one at a time. You don't need to glue size the um, wood. Glue sizing means this wood is very soft wood, so it absorbs the glue, and it, so it doesn't glue very well. Glue sizing means you put a layer of glue on it and let it dry, and that seals the wood so it doesn't absorb all the glue. Then you re-glue it. But we want a bad glue surface here. We don't want a good, strong glue joint. We want to be able to take it apart later. So don't worry about glue sizing it. They're working fast in a warm room with the glue. You just take your brush, brush it here, brush it here, put your piece of tissue on it, pull it together, put the clamp on it. Make sure it's seated flat, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This gentleman here, he's on this violin for about 13 years. He wants to start playing again. Is it worth um, fixing up to try and get it started again? Can you bring it to the strings? I told him it was cheap, but is it just, just to get started, is it just a fix? Is it going to be worth it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the bridge is leaning forward. It needs a new bridge. I've already said. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, the dimensions are okay and the neck is straight. That's what I was That's saying. That's the best you can hope for. Yeah, That's go ahead. That's what I was saying. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, so now what about glue? Have you got glue? No. Call Vitali Import. I told you about them in Whittier. Okay? You have them, you have them written down, Vitali Import Company? We'll get your notepad out or something. Uh -huh. 
是景区上也在那美国 U S C， 索尼亚的表演的非常精彩，谢谢侬。谢谢侬，谢谢侬，老高兴，老高兴，没有把那个上海人来来美国。啊，那上海人，那上海人。OK，OK。